Hi, I'm Dave Hobbs for Team AVI, and welcome to this program. We're going to talk about Fluke products because they're the most prolific meter on the market. Most everybody has a Fluke meter of some kind. We're going to talk about meter you may already have, like a, fifth, like a Fluke 87, 3 series, the new Fluke 88, 5 series, the Fluke 1587 high voltage insulation tester, as well as the brand new Fluke 233 with the removable head that you can pull off and leave with you in the car or on your bench or whatever and have the meter with the leads in a hard to get to place so you can have basically your cake and eat it too. Let's get started with some of the meter terminology of some of the icons and buttons. We'll call it buttonology of a typical multimeter. Well, let's get started with a little bit of a background on how a basic meter works, and we'll specifically talk about my meter, the one I use in the shop every day, this Fluke 87 3 Series. Well, to get started, let's talk about what the little jacks are on the bottom. Going from right to left, the volt, ohm, and diode check. So the thing that looks like the horseshoe, that's the omega symbol. That's for resistance testing. The V, of course, for voltage and the diode symbol for diode test. All, going back over to the left, we've got the common, which is where you might hook to a ground if you're measuring voltage on a car. And then we start into the amp section. The milliamp up to 400 milliamps of capability. There's an internal fuse. That's why it says fuse. Beware if the meter you own does not say fused or it says unfused. When you try to run more current than what it says in that circuit, if you're hooked in series, and that's how you hook an ammeter is in series, you will fry that meter. This has internal fuses, a 400 milliamp fuse for this section, a 10 amp fuse for this section. It's recommendable, however, unless you know exactly how much current that circuit's going to draw, is to possibly use an inline fuse holder in series with your test leads so that you don't have to go looking for a hard to find fluke fuse unless you keep a box of them in your shop. It's not going to be something you're going to run down the local hardware store and get. The first V, and it's confusing to a lot of technicians, believe it or not, still to this day, uh, they turn it to this section where it says V for voltage, and they really should have it here. This is a symbol for a sine wave. That's for alternating current. So if you're measuring, let's say, a two-wire crankshaft sensor, something that's going to put out some AC, or maybe you're looking for the ripple voltage of unrectified current coming out of an alternator, that would be where you would put the meter on AC. This is your DC setting. So the, the dotted line and the solid line on top of that, that's for DC voltage. So here's two volt settings. Make sure you know if you're looking for AC or DC and get the knob to the appropriate point. This is millivolts, so that's one one thousandth of a volt. Little m, not a big M. There's a big difference. And that is a DC symbol. So millivolts of DC. This is the continuity test that will actually make a noise. It's a symbol for the little beep it makes when you hook the leads to a circuit that's a complete circuit. Let's say you're looking for a good wire, and one end of the other you measure, and it's a good wire with co continuity. So it's called continuity test. This is also where you put it to check for resistance in ohms, and it's also where you'd put it for capacitance test. One more click, and we have diode test, so we can check diodes to see if they're open or if they're shorted. And we can also look, turning one more knob uh, notch clockwise, milliamps of AC or DC, and then microamps of AC or DC, or one millionth of an amp of AC or DC. So that is basically what the knobs mean. Now, if you ever get confused and you get your meter at a particular point, and you're using one of these advanced features like min-max, and you need to get it just back to working normally, a simple movement from wherever you are, let's say you're measuring min-max and we get it locked and we want to get it back, you just simply turn it from one measurement to, to the other, just turn the rotary knob once either way and it goes back to like a reset and we start recording again whether you're measuring volts or ohms or amps or whatever may be appropriate. Uh, the meter buttons at the top will start with this little symbol looks like a little light bulb, that is the backlighting. Let's go ahead and turn the meter on to say DC volts and we hit the button that says backlighting and it lights up. Gives it a nice uh, under the dash help so you can see what's going on. It also changes to a four and a half digit mode if you hold it in 
while turning the meter on to ohms. So if you're doing a very close in scrutinization of a resistance reading, uh, and a good practical application for that would be the resistance of an antenna ground. If you're looking for some kind of a radio problem and you want to see hundreds of an ohm, you can actually move that decimal point over as you turn the rotary knob from off to ohms while holding that backlight button on. And now we have one more digit. If we had the leads hooked up, we were measuring some circuit with some resistance, we'd have one more digit of accuracy. So I'll go ahead and turn that back to DC volts again. And if we now turn the little yellow button on after the meter's turned on, it becomes a button for the backlight. Also for one second when we do the min-max feature. Um, moving over to the left, the peak min-max button also shares a duty with this little symbol for a, a noise, a little beeping noise. That's for the continuity test. And keep going over towards our right here. That is the relative button, a little shape for a delta. It shows you the change. So if you're looking at a particular voltage or resistance, and you hit the button, and then you hit it again, it will show you how much things have changed. So you won't see like 15.2 volts or 12.5 volts. You'll see the difference between the two. So you'll see, we'll say uh, 2.7 volts is what it changed. So that's what the relative button does. HZ is for frequency. That stands for hertz times per second. So if you want to look at a, at a, a circuit, for example, an EGR solenoid or an EVAP purge solenoid that's being turned on and off. If you want to see if it indeed is being turned on and off, because on volts you may see the meter jumping all over the place, you hit this button for frequency, HZ, and it shows you how many times per second it's changing. It's at 120 hertz or it's 40 hertz or 128 hertz, whatever the case may be. If you hit that button a second time, it becomes duty cycle. So it shows you the percentage of on versus off time on a pulse width modulated circuit. And back up here to the top row, the blue button is a little bit of the odd duck button. It's if you are in this mode that shows a symbol of continuity, the horseshoe, omega, ohms, resistance, or capacitance. Now most techs out there working on cars aren't really getting into measuring capacitance of circuits. But if you as a, a different kind of technician, electronics technician working with equipment, you might be checking capacitors. And it might be something we'll be doing in the future in the automotive electronics world. But the blue button, when you turn it to ohms, it, by the way, default would be ohms for resistance. The blue button toggles between the little symbol for capacitance, microfarads, and the little omega symbol, ohms. So just be aware of that. If you accidentally hit that blue button and you don't see the ohm symbol, you're not going to be measuring resistance. You're going to be measuring capacitance of that circuit. So uh, and just to review, anytime you're in doubt, just turn it one notch, the rotary switch one notch one way or the other, and it goes back to the default modes. And then finally, the range. We can set up an auto range, which is what it does by default. Once again, if you get it out of auto range mode, just switch it one way or the other, and at default goes back to auto ranging mode. So if you want to get into a more defined range, you want to have a low range or a high range and not have it constantly shifting gears, if you will, with auto range mode, you hit the button for range, and it goes through a set of different ranges for volts, ohms, amps, whatever. And then finally the hold button, it's kind of like uh, if you want to freeze frame whatever that meter is showing at that moment, you can hit that hold button and you'll freeze whatever is on that meter. Uh, also the blue button it has another function and that is you can disable the auto shutdown mode. When the meter has been just setting unattended for some time, there's been no movements, no change in what's going on with the meter, it'll just shut itself off to save the batteries. The blue button can also be used to disable shutdown, auto shutdown mode. Back to our blue button, remember it had multiple functions? It's not the only button that has multiple functions. That's something common with some fluke equipment. The relative triangle symbol or delta, the relative button, not only did it show us a relative change, let's say it went from 12.5 to 14.5 volts as you wiggle to wire the output of the alternator and found a bad connection. And it showed you that difference at 2 volts. Well that button can also be pressed prior to using the meter as an ohm meter. So if we set it on ohms 
and we hook our black and red leads together of our test leads and we don't see 0.0, .0. we see what's traditionally, you'll see some resistance of the leads themselves, let's say three tenths of, a, of an ohm.